All right, everyone. First round of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs is now history. It was a thrilling, thrilling opening round. What did we have? Five game sevens and overall highly competitive product, too. So now we're on to round two, and we have two folks here to help you out with it. Roto Wires, AJ Scholes, NHL.com fantasy editor, and Adua. Opening face off, everybody. DFS preview of tonight's Stanley Cup playoff games. A second round action now. AJ, hook me up with your favorite DFS play in uh, Tampa Bay and Florida. I mean, how is it not for Hagee at this point, considering he's currently second in postseason scoring with six goals and six assists, six assists, um, and he costs you just 3800 on tonight's slate. Like, I'm not expecting him to put up five points every night, um, but at that price, really just one point will do the trick. He's been on the score sheet in all but one of the six games versus the Capitals. You can double down on that line for relatively cheap as well and add Claude Giroux for 4600 He's got five points in his last two games, so I think both these guys should be in play uh, looking at tonight's slate. What do you want here, Anna? AJ teed me up perfectly. I'm actually going Claude Giroux. So he had seven points in those six games against Washington in the first round. He's been better than a point per game player, 30 and 24 games since being acquired by the Florida Panthers back in March. And, you know, Giroux actually had five points in four regular season games against the Tampa Bay Lightning. He's going to look to keep that momentum going in the second round. All right, guys, let's talk now. Uh, St. Louis and Colorado, a uh, favorite DFS play from this one, man. We saw Colorado, I believe, sweep this in the first round last year, right? Yeah, and, you know, I have to do with Devon Taves on the blue line. So he has the third most points per game with 1.25 out of all defensemen in the league this postseason. He's playing with Kale McCarr. Kale McCarr has to be the most dynamic player, had 10 points in four games in that first round against the Predators. So if you want to get the value of Kale McCarr but get a little better deal on that pick, I would go Devon Taves. All right, Edge, is there someone that's just going to bring the points tonight? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Taves is a great call. For me, I'm just going to pay up. Like, let's not get cute with this. Nathan McKinnon and Cal McCarr, 8,800 and 8,000 respectively. As Anna mentioned, you've got McCarr top five in playoff points despite playing in just four games. McKinnon, five goals in those four contests as well. Look, Jordan Biddington has been fantastic since coming into uh, the playoffs for, for the last three games. But the Wild aren't the abs, and, and I expect uh, they will uh, – you know, lay, lay some goals on him. He's had some bad games throughout the, the postseason here or it, during the regular season, rather. Um, so I, I think you just stick with what works and go McKinnon McCarr at the top of your lineup. All right, AJ. So when we're looking at both games here, who's your favorite value play between the two? I mean, obviously, Verhage is definitely a value play at 3,800. But I also really like Nick Paul for 2,900. He's probably going to see an uptick in minutes with point out of the lineup here. And he's been solidly productive even before that. 2,900 for a top six player is an absolute steal. If you want to get another share of Colorado here, you could look at Nanushkin for 4,300. He's got goals in back-to-back -back games as well. All right, Anna, who, uh, who are you looking to for value? Carter Verhage has to be the best value out there, but AJ's talked enough about him. So I'm going to go Colorado and another Colorado player, Andre Burkowski. He's at 3,200, had a 3.9 in that game four against the National Predators. He can show up in the playoffs when he has to. He had 17 points in 15 games for the Avalanche during that 2020 postseason run, was a huge component of the Washington Capitals when they made their Stanley Cup run. He really shows up in the big games. He shows up more as the playoffs go on. So maybe this is going to be a breakout round for him. All right, Anna, let's go over to uh, like the sports book here. Like which game do you think will feature the most goals? We know that that, that Tampa Bay uh, Panthers game is going to be that fast tempo, highly skilled affair and, and how motivated the Panthers are to get back to the Eastern Conference Finals I think for the first time since the mid-90s. I mean, they're going to be super motivated, but there's somebody in their way, and that's Andre Vasilevsky. So when you're talking about goals, it's tough to go with the game where Vasilevsky's in net, especially how well he played in those final two games against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Didn't allow a goal in the third period or overtime of game six, and then just allowed that one goal in game seven. So he's just been rock solid. So I have to go the other way. I got to go St. Louis, Colorado for the most goals in this game. Colorado had two different seven goal games in that first round. The Blues scored at least four goals in four out of the six games they played against the Wild. You know, there's some goaltending questions whether they can remain as solid in this round as they were in the first round. So the most goals, you got to go that way. 
Yeah, Vasilevsky really didn't look like himself in round one until I think the overtime portion of game six and in game seven definitely looked more confident as one of the chief reasons to that Tampa is uh, moving on. Uh, AJ, you want to go in the same direction as Anna here? Any any chance to believe that it could be that Sunshine State showdown? Yeah, I, I don't have any anything really to add to Anna's breakdown here. I mean, on the other side for, for Florida, Bobrovsky can also be a really solid netminder. 2.79 was the goals against average against Washington. Not great, but he can certainly play better than that. As she mentioned, the seven goals in two games for Colorado. Uh, and let's not forget, Bennington put together some pretty bad outings during the course of the year. And in his matchups with Colorado this season, he had a sub-900 save percentage across three games. So I do think that is the game to target in terms of which one is going to have more goals. Yeah, and then uh, AGA. I, you know, the road team that is most likely to steal game one, it's pretty obvious the lightning, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, it's it's not going to be the Blues. Yeah. Colorado went 32-5-4 and four at home during the regular season, uh, and I would expect the Avs to continue to dominate in Denver. The Lightning need to get home ice advantage back if they're going to take this series, and why not do it in game one? I mean, Anna, Florida has the horses to ride past the Bolts. We know that, but, I mean, tonight – these dudes want a three-peat so bad. So badly, and they showed up towards the end of that first round against Toronto. They have the momentum coming in. If I had to choose a road team to get this win in game one, it would have to be the Lightning. If Vasilevsky keeps playing the way he's playing, if the third-line guys for the Tampa Bay Lightning keep playing the way they're playing, they could steal that one game away from Florida in Florida's home. But on the other hand, you have to think that like the St. Louis Blues, Colorado Avalanche, obviously Colorado is a strong, strong home team. St. Louis really needs to show out swinging. They had a huge win against Minnesota in the first round. They really dominated a very solid wild team that played amazing towards the end of the stretch. So you never know. If we want to just pick a surprise for tonight, what if the Blues actually come away with game one, riding that momentum they had against a solid wild team from the first round?